Look him in the head with the crankbaits, what happened, and now I'm about to rip it out of it. There he is, I saw me! That was so sick! No! Uh, how you making, Bone Gang? And welcome <laughs> back to another Pelican Bone Outdoors podcast. This was the second episode with a theme song. What do you think, man? Dude, that slaps, man. I like that a lot. <laughs> yeah, man, I was proud of it. I still, like I said, I still want to tweak it. Uh, there was a few things I wanted to add in it that I couldn't find the videos because I didn't remember what videos they were on. I just knew it happened, so I'm gonna have to go through the the library and and uh and tweak it, make it a little bit better. But, but I'm, I'm with it, it dude. It, it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Especially starting out with the road with the crankbait in the head. <laughs> oh yeah, I, mean, I had to add that one, dude. I had to add that one. That's right. Uh, so today we're with Bailey Egbert. Is that how you say your last name? Yeah, yeah, we can rock with that. Oh. Everybody messes up. It's all good. How you say it? Uh, Egbert. Egbert. Is that what? What? What is that? Is that it's a, German? It's German. German. Yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> we're we're German names. <laughs> so today's main topic is going to be kayak bass fishing tournaments, but uh. Little background: Me and uh, Bailey met when I went up to Alex's house for the Bassmaster Classic, and uh, Bailey, what you spent just one night, right, by uh, yeah. by Alex's house, yep. and we all we all piled in Alex's wife's uh, car and went and got some ice cream, <laughs> had some laughs. <laughs> so I mean, you, know, you, you have a, a bunch of laughs over some ice cream. You're pretty much friends for life, right? That's I right, mean, We're pals. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good time, man. It was a good time. We definitely need a to link up again dude and uh man it was i wish i was there for the week man it sounded like you boys had not the the fishing fun but it sounded like some fun regardless alex alex had a lot of fishing fun i mean he <laughs> was catching fish he was the only one catching fish so hey you come right. up here i'll uh, i'll make sure you catch fish before i do new york right that's right yeah All land, land, land of the dumb york. fish <laughs> so what part of new york you from I'm in Buffalo right now. Uh, I grew Buffalo. up in central New York, like in the, the Finger Lakes, if anybody knows what that is. But uh, yeah, our fish are plentiful and they're very stupid. So it makes for some fun times. Yeah, it sounds like boy. I've been to Buffalo one time. I took a train from New Orleans to Toronto. Sure. And we had a layover in Chicago and a layover in Buffalo. And then we got to, you know, I guess we had to, you know, get on different trains. I guess you call it a layover. I don't know. I know it's yeah, I layover so. in the plane world. But then, um, so on the way back, obviously, we had to do the same thing. And we got stuck in the Buffalo train station, which is Ooh. like smaller than half of my house. And we were there for hours. It was freezing cold outside. It was just not a <laughs> not a, not a pleasant experience. There. It was probably a dump, too. No oh, most. absolutely, dude. Absolutely. But we did, uh, was it, I don't remember if it was on the way there or the way back. We walked all the way down to some, like, bar and grill just to get buffalo wings so we could say we had buffalo yeah, wings and buffalo. You, go. you got to. They were good. So we had uh, the deep dish pizza in Chicago and then the buffalo wings in Buffalo. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and I was so sick of snow that week. Oh, it was ridiculous. Buddy, I, I'm there with you. I live in it. And this year was the record uh, amount of snowfall in Buffalo. Really? Yeah, it was bad. We literally had a two-week span where it went. We had seven foot one day. Holy the, crap. The Bill Stadium got seven feet of snow. And then two days later, all of it melted because it rained. And then uh, like literally a week later, another four feet. <laughs> That's insane. So when you say seven foot of snow, that means you walk yes. out your door and it's seven foot high? Yes. God, I, I had snow that, up to almost the top of my truck. So you got to get that stuff off your roof, don't you? Because it'll like collapse your house or something. Yeah. I mean, some people, you I mean, in Buffalo, a lot of people got it where it's like heated or they have like methods oh, of really? doing it where it's, you can make it easy. But yeah, I mean, it's, that, that stuff will weigh down. A bunch of people don't even think about down it. here. It was bad. That's crazy. Seven feet of snow. No, thank you. Yeah, it was like right before Christmas too, uh, when they got like the five feet. Uh, my fiance and I thankfully were down in Florida with my uh, my parents, but 
the snow came through, then it rained and got then it was like ten degrees. So all everyone's pipes I, and everything were freezing uh, and people like were passing away from carbon monoxide and everything. And it was it was bad, dude. Good old Buffalo. That's the thing down here after hurricanes is a lot of carbon monoxide issues because people running generators and not using common sense. So I mean you literally have people running a generator inside their house or uh, like on right on their front porch on a closed in like patio or something. Yeah. But uh so kayak bass fishing tournament. So the tournaments are they run by like bass and major league fishing or is this like a separate thing altogether? So there's a few major trails uh of the two like big bass tournament. You got to see Bassmaster Classic. Yeah. Uh that organization has a kayak series. Um of the other big bass like the the boat side from a tournament standpoint, major league fishing, they don't have one. Um but in the kayak realm, there are right now there's three major trails. It is uh, Hobie Bass Open Series is one Bassmaster Kayak Series, uh, and I guess you could say kayak bass fishing, even though I'm pretty sure they're basically gone now. But uh, there, there's a whole bunch of drama going on with it. But um, essentially, Bassmaster has theirs, and then Hobie BOS uh, is a big one right now too. Um, so Bass is the only one that really has like of the of the major organizations has a kayak trail hmm. so the hobie one that's run by i'm assuming hobie yeah yeah so is that's that... so the downfall that they have is it's coincides with the brand hobie so like right. if the brand isn't doing well then the tournament trail loses some budget i assume so it's that's their that's i think the only negative that that trail has is it has the hobie name attributed to it but if any other sense. any other brand kayaks can enter or yeah is it a hobie yeah. only Okay. Yeah, you can you can use whatever you want. You just can't use motors on that trail. And that's like a national thing. Yep. I mean, it's so okay. It's you like last year. You hit those. Yeah, yeah. Like last year, there was uh, I believe it was nine events. Um, uh, they were all over the north, uh, Midwest, South, Southeast, uh, with a um, top fifty championship. That was actually down uh, near you in Louisiana at Cattle Lake uh, for 50 grand. Wow. Didn't you win like a big tournament? Yeah, I won the one of the Hobie BOS events last year down in Alabama on Lake Eufaula. And that was a, what was that payout? Ten, ten and a half. Ten and a half grand. Jeez. That would it's be nice. pretty sweet. What's the entry fees for those? Uh, this year it's 295. Last year it's 275. Now, how does that like you got to pay per tournament? I'm assuming. Yeah, so like I mean, you can do one, or you can do them all. It's up to you. Um, if you want to make the Hobie BOS Tournament of Champions with the top fifty championship, which is now it's top sixty this year, um, is you either need to one top three in event. Uh, if you top three in one of the events, you're automatically qualified. Um, or it is Angler of the Year standings, so you have to fish at least this year. It's at least four events in place. With uh, and I think it's top 33 i think it is this year uh if you don't top three you have to be in top 33 of angler you're standing standing points to qualify if that makes sense do you have like do people do this for a living i mean the yeah. kayak just like the, they do in the boats so, I mean, there, there's getting, people that do it for a living deal. yeah they had a tournament here in leeville which is i mean basically the end of the world um <laughs> just before grand isle and it was like the world championship. So I, it wasn't bass, obviously, because it was down there. So it was mm -hmm. like, uh, I'm assuming salt. Well, they might have bass. No, I don't know. I think that's mostly going to be like inshore salt. But I don't know exactly what it was, but it was like a world thing. And they were all given the exact same Hobie kayak. And they get, you know, they have their stickers all over the side, like their name and everything like that. They had the exact same setup. And the only reason I know is because uh, one of the kayak shops I went to were selling one of the boats after the tournament. Mm. Um, so I guess they don't keep them. They just use them, and then they get sold with, like, everything on them. I mean, it had the the power pole on it. It had, you know, uh, I don't know if it even had electronics other than that. But it had a bunch of extras and stuff like that. Loaded up. Yeah. But it was, yeah, it was, it was, it was pretty interesting. 
And I'm, yeah. I don't know if that was put on by Hobie or if it was just that's what they picked. I don't know a whole lot about it. I need to research that. I know they have a Hobie World Championships, but I don't know. But I know that was like this past summer, I believe. Well, this was, was a few years ago that I remember. That when it was oh, if it was a few years ago, there could very well could have been the Hobie World Championships. I, I don't know for certain of history. I, I never really kept up with like the world stuff. Um, <clears throat> but essentially, there's a way you can qualify through certain events to, uh, like, I think it's top three in Hobie BOS um, qualify for worlds, which they got to go to Sweden and fish for freaking pike and per- pike and perch. So it's a different species for the world thing. I'm yeah. assuming it's not just the bass tournament. Yeah, yeah. They, I mean, we had a bunch of our best bass fishermen. Bass anglers on Hobie BOS this past year go and fish for pike and perch in Sweden. Pike Some of them did pretty well. What? Pike and what? Uh, perch. Perch? Oh, the yellow, like yellow, yellow perch? Yellow perch, yellow perch. Yeah. I, I forget I got to specify. Well, there's people from the south. I mean, the perch can mean a whole bunch of things. <laughs> if you, yeah, well, we call it every... Perch. <laughs> yeah, everything's perch. If it's not a sockele or a bass, it's a little pan fish, it's a perch. <laughs> the only one we differ is the different differentiate is the the sock layer crappy crappie whatever whatever y'all call it yeah up here in the north if you say perch uh we usually refer to it as yellow perch like the crazy yellow and orange and green right. striped fish yeah some of the best eating Dude, you need to come really yeah well, that, see, i say that about the little well the brim bluegill what y'all call them brim or just bluegill or call them bluegill <laughs> yeah. okay uh, brim might be another southern word too i don't know it is yeah brim is definitely a southern southern term for bluegill bluegill okay. or crappie i feel like people always call them they mix them together because then like i didn't know there was a difference yeah i didn't know there was a different word for them growing up it was always perched to me mm-hmm. then i started hearing people from like mississippi uh calling them brim and then when i started watching youtube i realized it's not a perch at all it's some you know it's a sunfish <laughs> bluegill whatever that's funny they started talking about perch oh yeah we caught a perch and i'm like i don't we, that ain't a perch i ain't never seen that fish before yeah <laughs> dude have you ever heard of ride the bull kayak no. fishing tournament okay no, I so this year it looks like it's august 26th this year down in grand isle do you know where grand isle is you ever heard of Grand Isle, Louisiana? I've heard of it. I, I don't know where it is, though. All right. So down here is the largest kayak fishing tournament in the world. And it is, you fish for bull reds. Okay. Um, if you have, let's see, you can Google Ride the Bull tournament and uh, and check it out. But I'm there's a pass that, there's a bridge that goes from one land onto the actual island of Grand Isle. And you fish that pass. And around August, these giant bull reds start just schooling through there. And then they catch them. Um, they have, like, support boats. All you have to do is land the fish in your kayak. Then these boats come by. They'll take them, go measure them, weigh them, you know, write that down to see who wins. And I think, I want to say they tag them because it's the CCA that puts it on, which is our, our uh, something coastal association. I don't know, but they're uh, a conservation yeah, the coastal con- or the coastal conservation association, I think coastal, that's what yeah. it is. Okay. Yeah. yeah. yeah I Louisiana. think almost every state that's on the coast has one. Right. Yep. So that's that's who puts this on. Um so it's an awesome thing, man. But I I'm, I want to I told Alex he needs to come down, but you need to come down. We all need to get together and do this thing. It'd be a blast, man. How does it work? Is it like one red per person type of deal? Like what um I'm trying to picture how to measure a bull red in a kayak. And it's well, that's happening. what I'm saying. You don't have to measure it. So they'll come get it. They have like motored boats that'll come. So you just hold, you have to hold on to this thing. Like until you they just, come get you it. just, yeah, you just catch it. I'm sure once you start cranking it in, these boats will come and take it from you. Oh, so they you follow gotta, you. Okay. Yeah. All you got to do is land it because you're not, you're really not spread out that far. It's the pass. It's like real deep and wide. So you got enough room, but I mean, you're, you're almost I mean, from the pictures, like I said, I've never been there. I I was registered to fish it one year, um, the year of COVID. I had my hotel and everything. I was so ready, and then COVID came, and they canceled it, so I didn't get to do it. And I had tried like two years previous, never could make it, and I've been trying ever since and still haven't been able to make it. So I'm not sure exactly uh, how they do it. I just know 
I'm trying to look it up right now, but I don't I'm not navigating this thing very well. But yeah, I know they got runners, so they got the boats will come get it. As soon as you land it on the kayak, they'll come get it from you, bring it back, weigh it, measure it, put you on the board. <laughs> I don't know what other categories they have. But you, just, you, know, you I mean, set the hook and start blowing your whistle so they know you're hooked up. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not going to have to blow a whistle, dude. I land one of these big fish. I'm going to be screaming because these are like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, these are four foot plus huge yeah. reds that you can catch. And honestly, my PV red is only 30, 34 inches. So, you know, if I hit, if I hit a 40 something inch fish, dude, I'm going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lose it. <laughs> <laughs> They'll hear you from. All the way up north. Have you ever caught a redfish in a kayak? Nothing like big, like some 24s, but yeah, in a kayak. Okay. Uh, I literally caught them like on bass fishing tackle, like my frog rod, which with a frog in the salt and mangroves, skipping a frog up in the mangroves. <laughs> it was pretty fun. I caught my first red on a frog uh, earlier this week. No, last week. Late That's last awesome. Week. <clears throat> um, Surprised the heck out of me because I didn't think there was any redfish. I've never caught redfish in that canal before. I was just bass fishing. It's like and brackish. It came out of nowhere and smashed it. Yeah, I'm mean, just about everything I fish is brackish, mm. or at least connected to brackish. Because I mean, redfish, redfish can go up into no salinity. They just they need salinity to breed, but they can tolerate. I mean, almost no salinity. Right. So they can get. I mean, if it's connected to the Gulf, they can get. They can get to it. Um. But yeah, so today today I went out in my kayak in the Hobie, and I went to my favorite honey hole. So it used to be a cypress forest, basically. It used to be cypress all over, but the saltwater intrusion killed all the trees. And so now there's tons of stumps. So you can't get in there with a boat or you'll rip your prop off. I mean, even your trolling motor, you'll tear it to shreds. So I love that place because boats can get on the edge of it, but not many people fish it. And I have rarely seen many kayaks there. I see a few kayaks here and there. And mm -hmm. dude, I've had way more good days than bad days. And today was definitely one of the good days, man. I threw two big bull reds back. And then I ended up coming home with my limit five and a giant catfish. And then I landed two little dink bass, but I missed probably three or four more little bass. So hell yeah. Dude, you gotta come down. It's, it's dude. The, those will, I've seen a few guys fish it. Like one of the channels I watch, Ben Milliken, he uh, he has this place down by him in Texas where he goes and he'll be bass fishing, but then you know throw a chatterbait and catch a big old redfish. Oh yeah. I'm like, dude, I'm all about that surprise because like the only surprise I get up here in the north is these damn pike, and I hate them. <laughs> I want to kill them all with fire. So like, give me the reds, dude. Because <laughs> like that sounds like way more fun. Dude, the, the place right by my house, I go bass fishing in it all the time with my kayak. And almost every time I go out, I catch at least one red. And it's That's it's big. so much fun because I'm I'm you know, I'm targeting bass and we don't have I mean, we have a lot of little bass. I mean, if you catch a three pounder, that's a big fish. So I mean I'm catching, you know, sub one pounders, one and a half pounds to one and a half pounders, right? So you set the hook. Not much of a fight, you know. He takes off a little bit. You just, you just crank him right to the boat, you know. But then you get that bite, you feel that hit, and then you go to set the hook. And when it that fish doesn't move, but your drag moves, that you, you instantly know, okay, that's not a bass, that's a red. Fish. That's not a bass. And then they and then they just take they just take off, man. I love it. There's that's nothing awesome. like it. Hell love yeah, red fish, man. love it. But back to the tournament. So how much? All right. You had you got a Hobie, right? You got the 360 or yeah. yep. I still got Hobie 360. 360. Uh, I wish I would have had the money. I'd have bought Rudd's when he was selling it. Um how many electronics do you have on this thing? <laughs> uh are we talking just fish finders or everything that's electronic? I, I wanna know I wanna <laughs> know what a what a what a bass kayak tournament angler has on his boat. Like, I mean, just just tell me about your setup. Okay. All right, uh, so to walk through from front to back, I have a 20 inch, well, my front hatch, front hatch storage is usually all my plastics, uh, lunchbox, crap like that, uh, but it also has a 20 amp uh, X2 power lithium in it that um, 
is ultimately now it's going to power my GoPro and my TH Marine Hydro Wave. But right now it's only powering my Hydro Wave, which is a it's a deal that has a speaker system that I have on a Rail Blaza or a Blaza mount that goes in the water and it's a speaker system to elicit bait fish sounds to what? try to get yeah so like especially when you're fishing around schooling fish it can get them going it's really yeah i i've i'm playing around with it and i found an instance where it's been working but what i really want to do is create content around it in that i'm going to turn it on and use forward-facing sonar to show the school of fish and watch how they react because no one's put that yeah, out awesome. yet, which I probably just screwed myself. Because someone's going to hear this now and go and do it. No, no, but... nobody watches this. <laughs> nobody listens to this podcast. If you're going to say it, this is the one to say it. All it'll be all right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I got that in the front, and uh, right at my feet, I have like on the side rails. I got my hydro wave sitting there. I have a hummingbird Helix Nine uh, and Helix Ten. Uh, so I have two. Wait, a nine Fish. and a ten? A nine and a ten. I have two sitting there on the sides. Uh, I'm actually upgrading, believe it or not. Uh, and then on the right side, I have my Hummingbird Mega Live, which is the forward-facing sonar. Um, so I have those two. I got rods there that's to my side on the, the horizontal rod storage. Um, and then I got my tackle storage in the back with my GoPro arms and everything like that. Uh, and then I have a torpedo on the back, so I have a motor and all that jazz. Uh, and so I have motors a... are legal. Yeah, so like my local trail, they're legal, and also I can like I have it registered with the state, so I can use it like fun fishing. Uh, but you can also use it in practice for hobos. Can't use it okay. in the derb. Um, and then I have a 50 amp X2 power lithium that powers all of my electronics on the kayak. How much does that weigh? The battery or the kayak? No, like kayak. Too much. <laughs> it's not over capacity. So, I mean, it's as far as I know, but we're. we're well, good. The, they hold what? I think mine says 600. I think it's like 450 or something like that. I think. I don't know. There's a sticker inside the hole that tells you what it is, but it's good. Yeah, but nobody fine. pays attention to that. As long as you're not nah. taking on water, you're good. You ain't sinking. You're good. <laughs> Jeez. See, I don't even. You know what I have on my, my mud boat? My actual boat? I have a five inch low rants that I use to as for the GPS basically. So you can get these cards for the for the GPS around here yeah, that yeah. has it it's no that won't work here in the, oh, really? in the marsh. Because if you use even like Navionics or whatever, it's gonna show you on land when you're on water or it's gonna show you on water when you're on land. Because of the marsh here. It's for one it's so detailed and broken up and then every year it changes basically so we have um it's the la1 it's made by standard mapping it's actual satellite overlay that mm -hmm. goes in my gps so i'm actually looking at a satellite image uh like a google maps basically and it's going over that because you know what it, you need dude just... you need a hummingbird unit and you need to get the auto chart chip so what you do is you plug it in and it creates you a custom map by your depth reading so like mm -hmm. You go and make your run or your typical deal. And what it does is it creates a custom map for you using 2D and whatever sonar you got on your uh, transducer. And now you have your own complete custom map. And it's all That'd it's 100% awesome. accurate because it's like it's what your fish finder is reading. So it's what's actually there. So it's it's pretty sick deal. And that way you can find some sneaky stuff that no one else has got if it's not if it's not chart plotted. Are you sponsored by Hummingbird? I am. But like that shit comes in handy. I know. I'm just. I'm just. I'm just saying. You know, talk to your guy. I'll have my people talk to your people, and then we'll we'll figure it out. We we'll have our people talk to our people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think it would be so. It would be very beneficial for companies to sponsor me in that mud boat because <laughs> how awesome. I mean, who else would have on a surface drive have like two 12 inch hummingbirds on the front deck of a of a of a mud boat? I mean. I'd be the crazy coon ass on the bayou with two 12 inch screens on the front, one on the back, live scope and everything when I'm in, you know, 18 inches of water trying to find redfish. But oh, you'd be getting be good time. the comments, that's for sure. In oh, the bayou, yeah. you're watching NFL on your fish finder. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be sick. My, uh, my goal is to someday. Uh, eventually so hummingbird's got a unit it's uh their apex unit which is geared towards saltwater but it's got an hdmi in and out port 
And I just want to make a video one time of just doing HDMI in playing NFL on a Sunday while Absolutely. I'm fishing. <laughs> Dude, it'd be awesome. That would be awesome. I would love to watch a Saints game while I'm out fishing. You kidding me? Yeah. That'd be fantastic. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're multitasking. Well, I mean, Alex had the uh, the Bassmaster Classic on his phone the whole time uh, we were fishing that one day. <laughs> there you go. He just Red had it around. sitting on the deck with it running live. There you so, go. Man, you hook it up to a 12-inch. Be all right. Yeah. How many rods do you take on a tournament? Uh, I mean, it all depends on where I'm fishing, what time of year, all that jazz. But uh, my personality is I'm very OCD and very, like, thinking, like, oh, I can make five casts with that tomorrow. I'm going to bring that rod. So it's yep. like I bring way too much stuff. Uh, So, like, an average tournament, if I had to, like, slap a, an average number, probably 10 or 12. Rods? Yeah. On a kayak? Where do you yeah. put them? I mean, dude, I've actually tried to. So I had I own, I think like twenty six or twenty seven rods, and I've tried my best to take as like just out of curiosity how much I could fit in horizontal, and then my sitting in my vertical like on my tackle storage. Right. So my tackle storage fits eight, uh, and I put I was able to fit uh seventeen in my horizontal rod Jeez. storage. <laughs> so i've been you can fit a lot if you if you it's it's not efficient whatsoever uh but you could do it <laughs> so i take when i'm out in my kayak i usually take four rods yes yeah, so you're smart <laughs> and i fumble over those so i can't imagine having that many rods at one time like i usually have well i try i try and take rods that i can i can multi-purpose and yeah. then a lot of the ones, like if I'm using a crankbait or something, I'll put a, uh, what do you call it? A little clip, the snap. What do they call yeah, that thing? Snap. A little clip on snap. Yeah. Yep. I'll put that on there so that I can just, you know, jump through different ones. And then I'll keep one for bottom, one for top, and then one for like swim baits and stuff. I, I love little soft plastic swim baits. Um, yeah, see, I'm too lazy. It's like, I'm like, I'm going to have for every bait that I want to throw tomorrow, I'm going to put it on a different rod. <laughs> Well, I mean, I do want to have a bass boat just so I can have, you know, all my rods across the deck. Because even yeah. when I'm in my, even when I'm in my boat, I don't have a very, you know, big deck. That, that's kind of weird. Um, <laughs> to have all my rods, I can only have like the four. I have, well, yeah, I can put about four of them. But even then, I only half the rod is on the bow on the deck, and everything else is hanging over, and it just mm -hmm. it gets to it gets to be a mess. So I can't, I do, I just can't imagine that in a kayak crazy so do you yeah you I mean, put them after you use one and you're about to switch to another one do you put it up or do you just lay it down i like mean resting? usually like so it depends like uh for the most part i'll either put it behind me like if i'm fishing offshore i'm not afraid to put stuff like standing up but like if i know i'm gonna be fishing shallow say i'm gonna be around and under trees i try to limit how much i'll take and i put everything horizontal if i'm fishing shallow because I don't want anything sticking up. Last thing I want to do is have to waste my time during a tournament to take the rods that are sticking straight up, stay uh, right. straight up, and lay them down type of deal. So it's I usually will lay them down is is what I'm trying to get. like especially if I'm I know I'm gonna be using them soon or swapping back and forth. That way I have it right there at the ready. So like if I'm you know doing a two prong approach on certain things, like I'll have one leaning forward to the left, casting with one. And I got another one leaning back that I can <laughs> quickly grab. Like if they start schooling or something, you know, that I can just, yeah. It's, that's a you need to learn how to use, how to do, dual wield them and cast yeah. with uh, one in each yeah. hand, man. See, if it was legal, dude, I'd be doing it. It's That's not legal? Yeah, you, you can't have two rods at the same time. Really? Yep. Not, not they, in the they bathroom. Have a rule, they have a rule for that? Like how, yeah. who can do that? I mean, dude, like Major League Fishing has it, or I think it's like once a period, you're allowed to pull out a second rod. Like on camera and everything, because they have marshals that can actually enforce it. You know, right. I mean, where if you made that rule for kayak, like guys would be doing it all the time. But like, oh, it's my one time for the day. Like, yeah, it, you couldn't enforce it. I'm sure there's no no trolling or anything either, huh? Can't like troll. Just... Yeah. So, see, I can't I can't put rods vertical in the back behind me. I've had like because the Hobie has the two built in rod holders. Mm -hmm. in the back that goes on that you know that angle and i have an angle cooler that i always bring 
uh, well, I say always, when I'm keeping fish, I bring, and it has four rod holders on it, two on each side. But every time I've ever had a, a rod or a net standing up behind me, when I go to cast, it, it, it does like Alex did to my head, and it grabs onto it. And when I go to cast, I just bird nest every time. So that's why I always put it in front. If I if I even bring one, like I always just lay it down, like by my front legs, where it's so. If I if I'm ca- holding my rod in my left hand, I have it on my right side with the handle out, so it's out of the way, and laying in front, so that when I'm fighting the fish, I just lean forward and I can grab it. Because if it's standing up behind me, I mean, I, I'll do exactly what you just said. Yeah, but I'll, you have rods standing up behind you. And you yeah, but I don't know. I, I, I roll cast like when I when I go to. I roll to the side versus behind me. Well, yeah, no, I do too. I go from behind, but I don't know how, but in every time I've ever had something back there, it gets hung up on it somehow. Huh. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm just not, not going, you know, low enough with the cast. And I'll, I'll guess maybe, I don't know, but I've had it too many times where that bait will grab onto that other rod and I go give it all I got. And then, you know, you put that rod up for the day because yes, that real toast. <laughs> Like that happens. To, well, today I had a bird nest. And I don't know how. Like everything was going fine. I didn't hit nothing, but it. And I was like, "Nope, ain't messing with that." There's too many fish out here. <laughs> and it was my you know, favorite reel, so of course. Go it figure. Here. Yeah. That dude, it's a science, man. Like it's all, especially when you do a lot of the tournament stuff. It's it's pretty calculated, unlike where we lay stuff out for for what reason. Like uh, that's the part I love about it. I don't know. I don't know why. But I like that process. <laughs> so I was watching one of your videos uh, a day or two ago, and I'm noticing, like, we talked about all these electronics, right? Uh-huh. And then you have a rock yeah, <laughs> with a rope around it as your anchor. <laughs> so I want to I <laughs> talk about this rock. <laughs> like, I'm like, what is, I'm like, I'm looking at it, and I was like, it's a bright rope. I don't remember what color it was. It was like a I'm red look- rope my buddy had. Like I'm, his paracord. I'm like, what is what is that? I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it. I'm like, is that a rock? I'm like, I, I even typed it in my phone. Ask him about the you know Ask the anchor or whatever. The but then you but then you end up saying you end up talking about it in the video. I'm like, it is. It is a freaking rock. <laughs> so we were at Santee Cooper, and uh, I was really hoping that the the stage these fish were in were going to be uh, maybe some pre spawners or post spawners that. I could target because that's how I like to fish. I like to fish offshore. Uh, I could fish shallow and I like to fish shallow, but like majority of kayak anglers in kayak fishing tournaments fish shallow. So that's like right. my thing to get away from people's. I fish my strength. My strength is not what a lot of kayak anglers do. There's some damn hammers that fish like I do on the Hobie trail, but there's not a lot that I guess that know how to do it and do it efficiently. Um, but the unfortunately those fish were not in that stage where I got there and like, already knew that those fish are going to be shallow. So I spent too much time looking shallow and I was like, damn, I have a lot of big ones that are spawning. And I was like, it's going to be windy this weekend. Like, and I don't have a, I don't have a shallow water anchor or power pole or anything like that. Like I can't run that, that type of deal. So it's like, I'm like, well, we're going to go old school. We're going to go. Cause I used, that's what I did in high school, man. Like when I had my kayak, like I had a brick and paracord and that was my anchor. <laughs> hey, man. So like I, I was like I went and I found a, a rock at our campsite with my buddy and I was staying at and he had happened to have paracord and that was a big and, rock yeah it was <laughs> so you need to get one of those little five pound collapsible anchors man yeah I mean I don't fish enough shallow to really make it even worth it so it's like see that's gonna be my one time this year that I'll need it like to be honest so I I ended up letting it go let it back <laughs> in the wild. <laughs> I was like, all of this technology, dude's got a rock for an anchor. That, that, that's classic. That's, awesome. <laughs> so, I, that's another thing that I didn't know about until YouTube and, and watching y'all is uh, when y'all say offshore fishing, I'm like, offshore fishing? To me, offshore means you're going out to the oil rigs to catch, mm. like, you know, tuna or something. Same thing, but on a micro level. <laughs> right, right. Well, it's like, I didn't, because, I mean, around here, there is no, there really is no offshore fishing as far as the at least the bayous and stuff that I, I fish. I mean, you obviously we have lakes in Louisiana that I've never fished, and I guess that would apply to that. And that's probably why I never realized what they were talking about. Cause I've never I mean, I've only been bass fishing 
Well, it's it's getting to be a while now. Probably maybe like six, seven years. I didn't grow up bass fishing. I grew up inshore fishing. Yeah. So I, I'm still stuck to the brackish waters. I've never really hit that many lakes in Louisiana. Matter of fact, I've only fished one public lake in Louisiana. It's Lake Chico. And, uh, you know, I had a few bass. Uh, it was beautiful. So I want to start hitting them. I just need to get out there and do it. Yeah, but, pretty much if you're not on the bank, it's pretty it's much offshore. considered offshore. Yeah. I don't like to be on the bank. I don't know why. I don't. My I do. entire mantra, like my whole life for whatever reason, is like, if the majority of people are doing it, I don't want to do it. Like, dude, even like the popular songs in high school and even to till today. <laughs> I don't like it. because Everyone likes them. It. I'm like, I don't like it. <laughs> now you don't like it because you don't like it. You don't like it because they like it. It's right. Because they don't like it. I want to just... different. <laughs> And what happens when you find out that when there's a whole group of people that don't like things because everybody else likes it, then you're being like those people. Now, what are you going to do? Yeah, but it's a small group, so I feel better about it. <laughs> <laughs> it makes no sense, but it's how my mind works. <laughs> ah, good stuff. <laughs> uh, so you said, so you well, y'all got snow. So do y'all have the off season? Like, I mean, is there... Y'all get a lot of frozen lakes where you can't fish. Yeah, yeah. We we kind of have like and it sucks because like every year is different. Like we'll have one year where it's like a three month ice season where like this past year is like maybe a month. Uh we get we have some lakes though that stay open throughout the whole entire year, but there's points when the water temperature is like thirty five where it's miserable to try and go catch a bass right so those are kind of the down months or when i choose to go south um but we do get some some lakes especially the smaller ones here that uh get ice on them and it's usually like a january to late february ice season is what it's been past couple years so it's not too long it's not like the midwest but when you talk about ice season that means it's thick enough to to go out on yeah you can fish them um that sort of thing. I said we we've gotten enough in the past couple of years in certain lakes that you can drive trucks on them, right? Like it's, it's that thick. But like we have our Finger Lakes, the glacial lakes. I mean, they get four hundred feet deep, so they don't. Jeez, they don't they don't freeze uh, down the south ends. The northern ends will freeze because they're shallower. Um, but I mean, it's they stay open, and so like people still fish them even like in January when it's negative 10 they'll be out in their boat catching salmon and stuff like that which hey man it's it could be wild dude like there's top water bites in january for salmon really they come up schooling on owl lives it's it's actually pretty cool i'd like to go catch salmon in negative, mean, 10 degree, <laughs> negative 10 degree weather hey man i'll do it all once i don't you know i don't know if i go back but <laughs> man, i do it twice but we'll try it <laughs> i want to can you keep those salmon or is that like yeah i know there's like salmon that you can only keep one or whatever is that... I don't know the whole rules because I don't catch them much, so I don't really pay attention to it. But like, yeah, you can keep them. That's... Yeah, I'm gonna have to try that. Do you ever do ice fishing? Uh, I've done it a couple times. I got into it heavy the first year of COVID because uh, it was a long ice season, and obviously, like, I had just gotten fired from my job because the whole COVID crap. So I was just right. like, I was going heavy on it. I was like, I got the, I got a little private pond down uh, the road from my parents' house that like literally took me two minutes to drive to and it has big bass in it and you can catch big bass in it through the ice. So I was there every single day. Nice. But after that, I'm like, unless I'm, go- I got buddies going and there's beer involved, I am not going to go. <laughs> I want to do it, man. I want to try it out. Like this little, uh, well, the tents look cool, but I want to get in one of those camper things that they drag out there and there's just holes in the floor. And like you can lay on the couch with the heater on and, Dude. and, and pull fish to the floor. That would be awesome. See, I could do that. You got to go to the Midwest. You got to go to you know, like Minnesota, Wisconsin, one of those two. Minnesota is probably your best bet for that, uh, especially upper Minnesota. I did that once uh, with a group of guys on Mille Lacs, and it was like we're sitting there drinking beers uh, in t-shirts and shorts when it was negative like 10 degrees outside because we're in these campers we're playing Fortnite and drinking beer while we're while we're fishing <laughs> it didn't feel like fishing but it was fun catching cooks from the couch that would be awesome yeah dude literally like we'd catch we'd catch like a, a keeper perch or a walleye and literally throw it across the room the guy that was cooking like he'd chop it up slap it on there like awesome. you're eating it and it was like 10 minutes ago you just caught it <laughs> 
What's your favorite tasting fish? Favorite fish to eat? Uh, walleye. Walleye for sure. See, I hear that from a lot of northerners. Everybody's like, walleye. I've never had it, so it's I can't, so good, really dude. can't compare it. You got to come up and try it then. Oh, I want to, man. I want to hit. I want, I want to go lots of places. It's a lot of a lot of fish on the bucket list. It's, I've uh, never a fish in Texas, a fish in well now Tennessee. Well, I fished in Tennessee. I didn't catch anything in Tennessee, <laughs> so I still got to go back and cross that off. You caught some. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Alex caught me. I got caught. <laughs> That's something I'll never forget. And it was funny because earlier that day he had just got through talking about. Uh, I forget what I said. Something about getting a hook in the hand, and he's like, yeah, why don't you get hooked so I can do the braid trick? And I'm like, okay. And then next thing you know, he's hooking me in the head. So that's all on the on, on the video. I don't know if you watched that one yet from when I went up there, but he yeah. says it, and then later on I get hooked. That was uh, probably the funniest part of that that video was the irony yeah. beforehand. I think he did it on purpose. I still, I still think he did it on purpose. He's always it's talking about doing it's the so trick. calculated. Yeah, it's probably so calculated. He's like, he's the only guy I'm gonna bring up here that won't care if I hook him in the head. He's like, yeah, he's like who can I do this to, and he won't hate me? Yeah, we're gonna talk about it. We're gonna joke about it. And then I'm gonna do it. <laughs> He'll never know. He's like, instead, you know, the guys look behind him, like when they're, you know, being responsible to make sure no one's behind him. And they right. cast. He's like looking behind, making sure it's angled, <laughs> angled right. He's like, yep, there's his head. <laughs> like, I, like, I don't want to hook him in the eye, not the ear. That's perfect. What? <laughs> <laughs> that rud, man. He's always got some madness behind the, uh, the plan. Well, if you watch his channel, he's got uh, several videos where people are getting hooked and he's removing hooks and, and, and things. That's why. You know, you seen the woman his dad got hooked, and they had to go to the hospital. I don't know. I don't know if I saw the one with his dad. I saw the one with him breaking his leg and getting hooked, and then some dude. I haven't watched that one yet. I need to go back and watch that one. He dude, he had like but... a stint like for a couple of weeks where it's like three videos. People were getting hooked. It's like, <laughs> so I'm afraid to keep fishing with the guy because next thing it's gonna be me on there. <laughs> What what happened is he probably the first video he got a lot of views people got excited about it so he's like oh this is working it's triggering the algorithm so then he just started hooking a bunch of people until until me and he found out it didn't work anymore. He probably didn't was get going to, there's, there's a point in YouTube where it's like if you're hooking yourself you're getting thousands of views like a dude literally made a video on how to how to remove a hook and he like sat there on his arm on his boat. And took three hooks and like stabbed himself with him. Hooked it. Oh, and then show people how to remove them. It's, <laughs> and it blew up. Like it was the whole reason his channel. Of was course big. it did. And it's, it's like, what are you doing, buddy? The things you have to go through to grow on YouTube these days, dude. That's the stuff that drives me nuts. Is like the the calculated happenings of that. Like there's there's calculated videos and such of like things going like fishing or certain stunts, but like doing stuff like that. That's like the happenstance yeah. stuff for views. I can't get with that. I blame people. Yeah. It's all that uh what do they call it? Dopamine hit that they want. Yeah. The views. Yeah. yeah. Yep. The dopamine. I'm ashamed to say that I got the I get the dopamine hit. Like I'm watching a video take off that I posted today. I'm oh, like, absolutely. Yes. yes give it to me. <laughs> but, but it's not like but it's not like a like some people do it because of you know the van vanity. You know, like the vanity matrix, they you know, they call it or whatever. I'm doing it because like I'm trying to grow a business and like Yeah. Okay. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It's this working. much closer. This much closer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, because I'm trying to go full time, do it full time. And yeah. I mean I'm still a long ways away, but you know, any video, you know, like they say, it only takes one video and you can blow up and, and be there. So it's like every time I see one tick past the you know, the previous one, I'm like, ooh, ooh, is this it? Is this it? And then you know the huge letdown at the end. So it's probably so here. So we're joking about Rudd purposely hooking you. You're probably purposely moving over in your head in the way so that you get hooked. <laughs> <laughs> Alex Rudd hooks me. Oh, he's about to cast. Let me jump now. Yes, got it. <laughs> yeah, well, it failed miserably because uh, let's see where where was it? Five thirty nine. That's like average. So it did, it didn't do any uh didn't do anything spectacular. Actually, no, it's. Right on the edge of no, it is. But it's one 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 view less than usual in the time span. So it didn't one work. view. Yeah, one view less than usual. Good lord, though, no. that's funny. The three dollars and twenty seven cents that video made was not worth it. I promise. 
Hey, you never know how YouTube works. It could take off like next year. It can, dude. That's crazy. Like I've had videos that have been sitting there for a year, and then all of a sudden it's in my top ten. You know, for the last two days, I'm like, what? So yeah. who knows? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense now too. Yeah, it's all weird, man. It, it doesn't make any sense. I'm I'm convinced even the people who made the algorithm don't know how the algorithm works. <laughs> They're like, what can we use as puppets this week? They're like, now they're just doing AI, letting it take over. And oh, yep. geez. Oh, but, yeah. So, circling back, <laughs> tell me what. Uh, so, like, how many how many days is the, the kayak tournament? Uh, so, Hobie is Hobie, like Bassmaster, stuff like that. Those are two days, a Saturday, Sunday. Okay. Uh, but, like, a lot of your local stuff is just like a Saturday. So, that, that one that was like a storm that got canceled or whatever was that a, a two day they got two day turn into one day turn it okay so they still did the tournament they just only had one day to catch the fish yeah pretty much and the kayak tournaments is a it's measured it's length of fish not yep. weight your five longest fish everyone's given not given but you gotta buy a catch board uh it's a specific branded board and everyone's got to have the same one that way it's fair and you're given identifier registration that sort of deal um try to eliminate cheating as best i can i'm gonna have to try and uh look into the tournaments around here there's like a bunch of yeah. because i know there's um what is it uh bayou coast but they they do inshore which i'd like to do too um but i'd like to see some bass fishing tournaments especially because i'd like to do well when everybody has electronics and i don't <laughs> i wouldn't even know how to use the electronics so what's funny is uh, last year on the Hobie BOS trail, uh, I, so I won four events in uh, New York, and I had two graphs in live on every single one. But on the Hobie BOS trail, I won an event and cashed in two more, and I didn't have a single graph on the, on the boat. I took them all off. Why'd you take them off? Just because I was fishing. I was like, the one in you follow how I won, like it didn't serve me any good to have a fish finder. I used it in practice. Like when I told you that auto chart chip, I used that because I literally was fishing two different stretches and I could tell one was deeper than the other. And that kind of helped when the water was falling where those fish would go. Mm -hmm. And once I knew that where that was like, it's super easy to tell where my stretch was. I'm like, it serves me no purpose. I'm leaving the graphs at home. Like it, it's just added sound when I'm trying to fish, you know, three, four foot of water added sound that's not needed it doesn't serve me any purpose and then i chickamauga was like i'm catching these fish on the bank running all new water and i'm like this graph's only going to get in my way and slow me down because i was literally skipping a frog under trees all day long just running as much water as fast as i could and then so the Susquehanna river it, it serves you no purpose to have a graph on your kayak because it's like super super shallow and it's just current and smallmouth. so you're just floating down river <clears throat> I wonder. Well, I mean, so I want to get a um, side scan on my. Actually, it'd be nice to have it in my kayak because a lot of the stuff I'm fishing is bayous and canals. Mm -hmm. So it's not really any open water, and I like mostly for structure. You know, I don't, I don't need to see the fish. I just want to see a spot where a fish might be, like underwater, uh, you know, structure or whatever. But yeah. I guess in a lake. But see, I don't even know how deep our lakes get. Well, no, I don't think we. I'm pretty sure we don't have any 200 foot deep lakes in Louisiana. No, no I um, mean it's probably mostly shallow flats, like maybe 15 foot at the most. Yeah, the biggest benefit when I fished Caddo in November for the TOC, it was <clears throat> I found the winning deal. But the guy, the guy that won, found it on, and like with the people that did well, it was offshore hydrilla and like holes in the grass. That is where it's a big benefit to have a side scan down in Louisiana is to find where that offshore hydrilla is at. Or there'll be like patches of cypress trees and then a patch of hydrilla in between them where they won't be on the trees, but they'll be in the hydrilla. So like that's the kind of whole deal that I'm trying to learn with these cypress tree lakes is like when it's cold, they won't be on the trees. They'll move 30 yards into the hydrilla. The sun comes up, heats up the trees, they move up to the trees. So, like, that's where it's a big advantage, too, to have side skin is, like, seeing that grass. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I need to fit because uh, Chico Lake, or Lake Chico, however it's called, Chico State Park, that was another Cypress, Cypress Lake, and I found them. I don't even remember. 
What month did we go? Oh, it was what month did we go to? Uh, okay, it was in March. Was it in March? Yeah. So they were they were moving up the spawn. This is why I found them in the in the backs, like the little fingers and stuff. Um, but they had a bunch of cypress trees out in the middle, but I didn't catch anything about the cypress trees. But mm -hmm. you know, I hate cypress trees. I can't stand them now. I'm so mad at them. Like I'm, I'm personally offended <laughs> because they look so much fun, and I can't catch a damn bass off of them. Oh yeah, they look like they'd be fishing there 24 seven. Yeah, yeah. But, no, and there's people that smoke them on them. They're like, oh dude, it's so easy, and it, and it is so easy to fish these things. And I've caught fish off them. Don't get me wrong, but like I've never, I've been to two Cypress Tree Lakes, and both times I've sucked miserably. Even though I find fish the way I want to find or why I want to catch them, but they always just disappear at down tournament day. It's just like, dude, it's so frustrating. That's just like any tree that's got a cypress tree lake, I'm gonna to refuse to fish from now on. <laughs> I just I just need to learn how to fish a lake. I mean, it's so different when I was fishing with Alex. Like, I mean, it's just completely different fishing. Like I had no idea what to do. And yeah, I, especially I, the places he fishes. Uh, like those Highland reservoirs chase, or they change so much. It, it's pretty wild to be consistently good out there. Well, I, I, I didn't know what to do to the point where I was fishing the exact same thing he was, and I was literally watching him reel. I was trying to reel the same speed and bump my rod every time he did his. <laughs> I still couldn't catch a daggum fish. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Fun, ridiculous. So, yeah well especially the lakes you guys were fishing at the same at that time they were tough they were going through yeah. transition so it was brutal as it was do y'all have so you have natural lakes or yep. by y'all all, all okay. natural so the 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 water levels just depend on nature then yeah i mean our water level doesn't fluctuate too much unless it's the great lakes like we have <clears throat> we have a bunch of bays um like bays that are off of lake ontario that come down that fluctuate based on Lake Ontario and the flow from that, the Niagara river through St. Lawrence. And it's also based on like rainfall too. We have heavy rainfalls. Those, those places flood heavy. Um, but beyond that, I mean like our, our finger lakes don't fluctuate all that much. I, I'll take it back. We have two lakes that they do fluctuate a little bit. Um, and it's the two lakes that are like, it's kayak only. Like there's no boats allowed on them because they're the drinking water for one of our cities. Oh, cool. And but they'll so if they're doing work on the dam or something, they'll fluctuate it, if that makes sense. But that's the only lake that it does. Otherwise, everything stays the same for the most part. Yeah, our our water levels change twice a day sometimes because uh, <laughs> you got to worry about tide most of. The... And then Dude. like today, the last couple of days we've been having a, a a north. Let's see, I guess that would be a northwest wind. Which is just it pushes the water out. So if you got a low tide, a low tide range, and the wind blowing, uh, where I went fish today, I mean it was mud flats just sticking out of the water, uh, where there's you know usually water. So yeah, yeah tidal fluctuates. confuses me, but I, I really want to learn it. Like we have the Potomac River here in the Northeast that I really want to fish. That fluctuates, where it's I don't know how you guys do it right now. It confuses the heck out of me. I'm still trying to figure it out, to be honest with you. <laughs> I mean, they got some guys that got it down. Like, they know they can look at the, you know, look at the weather, look at the tidal chart, and just, and, you know, they're going to be here. They're going to be here. Now, I mean, when you're talking like inshore fishing, inshore saltwater fishing, uh, you can go when the tide's falling and you go fish like these little, the little ponds and stuff that are draining into the bayous and canals. These little trinosis when that water's running out, them fish will wait right there for all the little shrimp and whatever that's coming out the marsh. And that's, I mean, that's a pretty good uh, thing to focus on. You know, a pretty good, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Way to predict it, I guess. Yeah. But when it comes to bass fishing, I mean, I guess it's similar. I would think, you know, you find running water, you know, there's a good chance a bass is going to be there, I imagine. Of course, that depends on which time of year it is, too. I, I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out this whole bass thing, to be honest with you. If there's incoming flow of water, that usually means there's incoming flow of nutrients, which percentages would say that there's probably going to be something sitting at the end of that waiting for whatever's coming at it. Right. Yeah. But does that, does that count for the when water's flowing in and out in the same day, or is that something where the water has to constantly flow in that one direction? That's my above my pay grade, dude. Yes. No, no. <laughs>
<laughs> uh, see if I can figure that out. I'll write a book and uh, I'll just retire. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta go find some some old cats, some old guys that are, uh been bass fishing their whole life. Was it was it Rudd that was making fun of you for saying old? <laughs> I don't know. Rudd made fun of me for a lot of things. <laughs> Good times, man. Yeah, we do. We need to all get together and go just invade some place. That'd be fun as hell. Get like a big group of us and just go fish for like a week. Where should we go? Uh, not Tennessee. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Y'all should all just come down here. I love time. to come down there. So I should go ask some reds. I'm Dude, all whenever you're ready, man. Whenever you're ready, I'm about to. Uh, I got the spare room ready. About to throw a bed in there. You can come crash here, or whatever dude oh we can get a bunch of us and we'll go rent out my buddy's lodge i'll trade you a red trip for a small mouth trip done sold deal so you'll I'm actually catch you. fish when you come fish with me you gonna bring your yak down i'd love to that'd be fun as hell i got plenty of good spots man like the, like the spot i went today my super secret fishing spot i don't let too many people in on it but you're always in New York, so I don't think you're going to be like inviting a whole bunch of your buddies to come, <laughs> come fish it and then fish out my spot. <laughs> I think we'll be all right. <laughs> it really is a sweet spot, man, because like not many people fish it. So there's not that many, uh, you know, not that much pressure on it. So Thank in you. my video, there's really only like there's really only one landmark that you can see in the distance that I try and make sure it isn't in my videos just 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 to make sure. That it doesn't get out too, you know, too much. Because if somebody asks me personally, if they come up like, "Hey, man, where'd you catch them? Would you catch them on?" I'll tell you. I'm not trying to, you know, keep it super duper top secret. But what I don't want to happen is get on like a, you know, a, a video or or say it on like a podcast, and then everybody that knows that area the next yeah. week goes out there and there's 50 people and just just blow out the spot and then it's done. Yeah, dude, that's my biggest struggle. Is like. I could be putting out these banger videos, but like I'm also petty and I don't want people to know find out what I found out. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like but also on the flip side of it, it's also like I worked really hard for this, so I don't want more people to find it. You know what I mean? Right. That's it's a hard struggle that I have because there's a good amount of people, man. Like I mean, I'll be as transparent about it as I can. Like I'm so I got a tournament this weekend that's a regional and a local combined conjunction. And it's on my home lake that I grew up on. And I put in a lot of work. So I've been able to really find some good fish that are out there. And I'm actually getting a new kayak coming in next week. But what I'm doing, dude, I'm ripping all my stickers and everything off my kayak so that people, because they usually look for the X, big X2 logo right. on the kayak. Like, I'm going that petty about it because it's just like you put in that much work and you figure these things out and you put in the time. Like, it's, it's almost you, you're... It's not, I won't say selfish. It's more like pride in the work you found. And you don't want somebody just to figure it out by following you around or, you know, that expect you to tell them when they DM you on Instagram where you caught your right. fish. Well, that's the thing. Like, especially people who don't want to put in the work. Yeah. Because you got people that will only ask and they won't, they won't go. Cause I mean, I'm, you know, I've countless days out there catching nothing, trying to figure it out. Even if there's one spot that I know I could probably catch fish, I'll go to that one spot that I'm not sure just because I want to see if I can figure it out and, and get it. But then you got the people who just they'll just ask. They won't go put in any kind of work. And yeah, that's, like, that's the people I definitely don't want to give, you know, just give it to. Yeah, I mean, if, if you're putting in dark to dark, like, and you got the passion for it, like, there's a couple of guys that, and I'm not going to, like, act like I'm some know-it-all because I'm not. Like, I just... I've worked really hard to understand the little bit amount of knowledge that I know right now. Right. And there's people that ask a lot of questions that like really have the passion where they're asking the right questions that it's like, you'll open up to a little bit more because one, they're not going to go run their mouth, but two, you know, it's going to be treated right. Cause it's also people right. that like, when it comes to a derb that if you show them something, they're going to show you the respect of like, Hey, he showed me this. I'm not going to hit it. Like, or if you want to hit it, there's people that, that ask. Like, there's been tournaments, dude, where I've had buddies show me stuff. And if it's near what I want to hit and I want to add to rotation, you you ask them. You're like, hey, you show me this. Do you care if I fish it? Like, it's the kind of like uh, ethic ethics of fishing that I think is being lost right now because there was such a flux of 
new anglers in COVID that there wasn't yep. a flux of education on how to operate on the water. Cause it's, it's everybody's water. No one's no one in their right mind is going to like, cause there's the whole thing where it's like, you don't own the water, bro. And I, I get that line. I hate that line. Cause it's like, <laughs> yeah. Okay. But like, it's a public park. You still want me to like be a douchebag to you? Like, like, come on. Like it's, I don't know. It, it's the stuff that gets me so fired up. It's just actually down here. You can own the water, which is crazy. Yeah, I hate that. I hate that. Yeah. That sucks. And uh, see, so it does suck and I hate it, but the, the, the thing about it is, is a lot of the water that the people own was land when they owned it at one point. Yes, I can understand that. So it, it's, it's conflicting. You know, I wish they would, I wish they'd come up with some kind of, mm, some kind of negotiation to where like, so the biggest thing for me, I'm a duck hunter. So these people have these leases and they, what they won't let you fish in it. Like the people who own the land, they won't let you fish in it in the off season. So why, you know, I would want to work out something to where, okay, I understand duck season, close it to fishing during duck season or close it for certain times during duck season so that they, you know, you're not scaring off the ducks. They can have their duck season. But I mean, in the middle of the summer, why can't somebody go in there and fish them? It's not your fish. Those fish come in and out. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't know. There's different arguments for it. I I, I hate it. <laughs> Even if it is the right thing somehow, I still hate it. Yeah. Ah, dude, I can't. That would that makes me it oh, drives me nuts, dude. We have so many homeowners here up in New York, especially because there's so many just rich pricks that have houses on the lakes and they're like, You're way too close to my dock. And it's like, okay. Oh, I'd be hitting them. I'd be hitting their docks with the baits every time. Oh, dude. Oh, there there's i had a guy last year like you can tell like when it's about to happen because like you you know when to turn the gopro on or something like that because you'll, you'll you'll pull up to this dock and like you see him coming outside and you're like this could go one of two ways and it's like you're like there's one guy last year i pull up and i'm fishing his dock and it's one of the only few docks i fish on this lake and he comes over and he starts he's just staring at me <laughs> and every like 10 seconds he'll go a couple steps closer and he'll be like look on like this and like you can tell he's pissed and he's like waiting for me to do something and dude i went to go flip around one of his boats and it missed it a little bit and just grazed he's a wooden dock and it grazes wooden dock and i'm throwing like a soft like a light soft plastic bait like nothing that's gonna even make a mark and he goes, don't you go hitting my dock there. And I'm like, sorry, sir. Definitely not meaning to. And he goes, he goes, we could do a better job. And he comes to the back and he goes, I'm like, I'm like, I started ignoring him. And I'm like, you having a good day? And it just fired him up when I said that. Like, oh, dude. He went, that nuts. would be a whole kill him he with go, kindness, man. He's like, you got this whole lake and you got to come fish here. And I'm like, yeah, because it's public. And he goes, no, this is my dock. And I'm like, the water ain't under It's not yours <laughs> under it. And I'm fishing that. And he's just like, he goes, it's so disrespectful. And I'm like, well, technically what you're doing right now is illegal. And that's when you educate them as like you're impeding on a outdoorsman or whatever the freaking rule is. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head, but like you can legitimately get people fined for coming down really? and messing with your, your hunt or your fishing. It's your, I'm trying to remember the rule it is in New York, uh, but there's like several other states that have it too. That's like you're impeding with like the, the hunt or something like that. I got, I'll have to find it and show you, but like there's, it's a legitimate thing of like, if you're disturbing someone fishing or hunting, like say you disrupt a hunt, you can get that person fined because That's like awesome. for all they know, like, dude, you're that deer. You, they just scared off on you. is like, that was like the only thing going to get your family through the winter type of stuff. Right. You know what I mean, like Hunter harass there's yeah. Hunter and fisherman harassment is the guy that commented down here. Follow and friends. Thank you. Um, Hunter harassment. There's like a fisherman harassment thing, which we there's people that got in trouble in New York for it because like there'll be a big fish on a bed under a dock and there's people fishing and their power pulled down and they're just like so mad they're like you gotta fish my dock we're like yeah like there's there's well, five yeah, grand the there's five grand right there under your dock like <laughs> well yeah tournament I didn't think of that Jeez. yeah they're like yeah like that's a paycheck sitting under there yeah yeah and they'll say that and they'll be like well. 
that's fine. Like it's my fish. Like and they'll go crazy, but it's like no, no, that's not how it works. I'd, ha- I'd have a whole video series on that, dude. I just go out there and fish people's dock and just just be so nice to them because that seems to rile them up even more. Oh, dude, great. that's that's the, there was there was one a few years back where uh, this dude that fished our local kayak trail. He's a he's an Asian dude, awesome dude, and he was practicing on this one place. And this guy came out like super racist, just super messed up. And he rumor got out about it, about it happening. And he had GoPro footage and showed us we had 30 kayaks sitting on his dock. In no. the <laughs> yes. That's awesome. Stayed there all that day. That is awesome. Just pissed him off. It was, it was pretty freaking cool. Dude, that is awesome. I'm always oh, hesitant man, just to, to share those dock interactions dude because they're so like they're so petty you know yeah live and let live yeah (laughs) yeah jeez so how is the speaking of hunting how is uh duck hunting in new york i mean Uh, do you do any hunting are you strictly fishing uh, i'm more of a white tail and a turkey guy i don't do a lot of duck or geese uh my brother does but he just moved out to utah um i know it's fairly good i mean from what my brother says it's pretty good if you can find the right places to go um but it's all kind of like if you you gotta put in the time like you can't just go show up somewhere and do it like it's the same same thing with public land deer hunting like you can go and show up every now and then and kill a deer but like if you put in the time that's when you can be a little bit more successful but i wouldn't say it's like really good or anything like that well, duck hunting down here used to be great, apparently, before I started. And then, like, the season I started duck hunting, it started turning into crap. So, I, <laughs> I've never seen good duck hunting. I hear stories, though. It must have been nice. <laughs> it seems like anytime you got private land, that's when it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Or when you have a farm and you flood your cornfields. Yeah. Which yeah. is something I don't understand. Because, uh, so, you can put water in your corn but i can't put corn in my water to hunt well, ducks. T- tell me tell me what sense that makes it doesn't and it's very similar to what we have here in new york is we're not allowed to put rocks or brush piles or anything in our lakes but they're allowed the homeowner is allowed to put what's called a weed mat out by their dock which is a this giant rug that sits on the bottom intended to kill all the grass and all it does, dude, is if like I'm throwing a crankbait, it just gets hung up, and I can't get it back because this is giant <laughs> rug. You, you're not getting it unhung no. unless you just go swimming for it. But it's like one. How am I not allowed to put a rock in the lake? But they could put a, something a a rug, you know. And then and two, who says they're allowed to do that on their? Because the it states about their property, they don't own that water. What right. gives them the right to put it there? So I got this whole call into our our. Department of Envi- Environmental Conservation, and I'm like throwing a fit more just because I lost fifty dollars <laughs> in jerk baits, so I'm petty about it now. So it's like I'm, I'm snippy. Oh, you need to get you a scuba tank, man. And go make some money. Just go around dude, getting it. all the all the baits. I've done it, dude. Where I bought a I bought a swim bait that was like fifty dollars, and it was it was like fifty five degree water, and I went swimming for it. I'm like <laughs> I'm like screw this crap. I just <laughs> bought this thing. I'm like. It was so cold, but I had to. I want to try and start fishing those big swim baits. I just don't know, like around here though, but where I fish, I'm gonna say I say around here. Well, I guess it would be extremely local. I, I just there isn't that many big bass, so I mean I'd be fishing for fish that aren't much bigger than the bait. Yeah, I mean I know there's guys that's thrown glides like on Caddo and stuff that catch some pretty big ones, but I've been recently going down the rabbit hole because. All I've had are like shine glides, which are like these smaller savage gear, like six inch glide baits, uh, bull shads that are, you know, decent size ish. But I bought a nine inch glide bait, and I, the first day throwing it, I caught a five and a half pounder. Yes. And I had one that was over hooked. six, like completely smoke it, like watching it all happen. And I'm like, I call my buddy, I'm like, God damn it. Like, why did I buy that thing? Now I'm screwed. <laughs> now I'm like looking at these, like, Hundred and fifty dollar like glide baits, and I'm like, no. I'm like why? Why do why? Do this why do you need a hundred and fifty dollar bait? That's insane, dude. It's nuts. 
like 150 is cheap when it compares to the glide baits. But why? I mean, you, you call it a five pounder on how much did that one cost? Uh, 70, 75 bucks. Gee, even that's just insane. Yeah. Well, it was like, especially because I'm going to lose it the first day I, I, I take it out. The drawing power that those baits have, though, is like insane. Like, even if you don't catch one, there is one, especially if you throw it in a clear water fishery, they are following it. And it's like, it's like, especially the tournament fishermen, I use it heavy in practice because it's like, even if I'm not catching them, I'm going to find out where they're at, especially if I'm going right. to be fishing shallow. Like, dude, I was throwing it over 12 foot of water where I couldn't see bottom and I'd watching them come up to the surface chasing this really? thing. Really? Yeah. Dang, it's pretty nice. You got me one. I'm going to have to try it. I got the, uh, what is it, the, the chase bait one with that little, it looks like a, uh, it looks like a buzz bait prop in the middle of it. Oh, I know what you're talking about. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. I got that, but it was on Monster Bass's website, so I was like, yeah, okay, I'll take it. But <laughs> Pull the trigger. <laughs> I played with it, but I never fished with it, so I don't know. It looks like it should work in theory. Yeah, and there's a lot of baits out there that catch the angler, not the fish. Oh yeah, and I'm and I'm a sucker for it too. I mean, if the <laughs> bait looks cool, I'm like, oh yeah, oh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna use that. Sold. Yeah, but all right, man. Well, I'm gonna respect your time with uh, ten minutes past the hour, dude. I appreciate you hanging out, man. Yeah, I appreciate educating me. Yeah, we have to do it again. Get you back on here sometime. But thank you, buddy. That... We got uh, episode four hundred coming up. For serious what? things, yeah. four hundred really, four hundred. What can get you on? Nice. Well, yeah. Tell everybody where they can find you, man, on all the different things you're on. Yeah, um, biggest things are you know, be the fish on YouTube. That's my personal channel, and then just on social media, every platform you can find me, just Bailey Agbrett, and then uh, check out uh, if you're into bass fishing, like heavy bass fishing, uh, serious angler. We got a whole podcast network dedicated to bass fishing. Yeah, y'all got like different podcasts, huh? It's not just the like one single thing, huh? Yeah, so we have the network as itself is uh we made it a whole deal. We're going really hard into it. Um last year we started the network itself. So you have Serious Anglers, the main show on it. Um Angler interviews, fantasy fishing, stuff like that. And then uh and that lives on its own platform. Each each show lives on its own deal. Uh and then we have the Lure Lab which is on its own platform and everything that's once a week dedicated to one technique. So like, uh, oh, wow. like Annie just did a, a show last week on the, the hover rig. It's this new Japanese bait technique that, uh, has taken fishing, uh, fishing industry by storm. So he did someone on that. Like he'll do it on like in one episode on swim jigs and like go into detail on the best setup, uh, line, best swim jigs you can buy, best trailers you can buy, how to work them why they're the best baits, that sort of deal. And then uh, we have business from the bass boat, which is all like the owner of Skeeter boats and like stuff like that, blazer boats. And uh, you know, like the, the new Western bass shootout on California that paid out 125 grand. Like we're doing, we're going live from those in California. Oh, wow. Um, so Legit. yeah, we're doing a lot of stuff and we got another, a new one coming. That's kind of tailored to the, what we were talking about tonight. Uh, coming up here soon. I think we're shooting for July 1st for launch date. Hey, you busy man. Yeah, we got a team together right now. It's it's uh, my buddy Andrew Full, Adam Deacon, and myself. We're looking at adding one new member here soon as well. Uh, we can't announce any of it yet, yet, but uh, it's going to be fun. Super duper talk secret. That's right. All right, guys. Well, that's going to wrap it up. Uh, we do this live every Tuesday or Wednesday. It just depends on my, my work schedule when I can uh, when I can get it in where we can fit it in. And then if you don't catch the live, you can always listen to it wherever you get your podcasts. Peace.